Welcome back to the channel. My name's Jason, and today we're gonna to be cracking back on with the V10 E92 M3 build. And remember guys, if you wanna do us a favor and you wanna stay up to date, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn the bell notification on. Now, those of you that have been following the build will probably already recognize this footage from previous episodes. Of course, if you've not been following the build, head down to the description and you'll find a link to the playlist. Now, for those of you that have been following the build, it's time to jump straight back in. So you'll probably remember in last week's episode, we unboxed the Max ECU and started working out exactly what we needed to do. Now, this V10 does require a few modifications in order to run the Max ECU. So in today's episode, we're gonna go through all of those different modifications, showing you exactly what we did, and also discuss some additional upgrades that we're gonna be putting on this V10. And in today's video, we're also gonna have some help from our friends, Adil, who you've previously seen on the channel, and also Stuart, who's yet to feature, but Stuart used to be an ex-master tech at Ferrari Maranello, so when it came to doing the wiring on this DCT gearbox setup, he was quite a helpful fella. And of course, we'll get into this a little bit later. But for now, we're gonna jump straight back in, and as you can see, we've got the V10 out the car, and Adil and I are in the process of removing the throttle actuators. That's because not only are they a common point of failure on the V10, but they're also heavily overcomplicated, and the Max ECU wants a much simpler format. So we're gonna go in a bit more detail and show you just what we mean. Now for reference, these throttle actuators control the individual throttle bodies on the V10. So these are quite important. They have been rebuilt before. Mm. They look like there's a bit of sealant on this one, to be fair. Oh no, my warranty's all void. Oh, what are we doing? gonna do? We can always put it back on. Yeah, we can always, like, you know. <clears throat> Got damaged. <laughs> this one's gonna stay warranted. Until we know, until we know what we're working with. <laughs> yeah. It look, looks like there's sealant around that bit, but the metal plate to the actual no, screw right on. Oh, okay, it's literally just two wires and then everything's on the board. <laughs> Apparently when these things fail, the gears fail, or that board that's in your hand fails, so it can be either or. There's not a lot to this board though, the board is incredibly like simple. Well no, sorry, the board's complex, but what actually goes into there is just these two wires. Mm. But I'm not seeing, there's no way there's a TPS on oh, this, no. Because the TPS is just uh, is on the board. The board's calculating. Seems very overly complicated, if I'm being honest. If it's as simple as it looks, it's literally just a case of wiring to those two pins, and mm. running a plug out the side. I literally... Just bypass all of that. Do you know what? Even, like, I don't know if, if it'd be easier to, like, put these boards aside to sell. Yeah, if and, then really make a... and then literally, yeah, just make yeah. a plate. That's incredibly... Simple, almost dangerously simple. What the fuck is and what came next was an absolute masterclass from Adil in how to 3D print. So Adil simply 3D printed with the existence of a plug, the actual backing plate that we're going to use for these throttle actuators. So this 3D printed piece from Adil will simply sit on the throttle actuator like so, and will allow us to terminate the pins inside through the plug that he'd put on the backing plate. This therefore meant that we could get rid of the original backing plate, which as you can see is quite a complicated motherboard. That's because it runs a lot of information through it via CAN bus and various other things that we no longer need as we're gonna be wiring the Max ECU direct to these throttle actuators via two wires. Now the next thing we needed to address was the idle control valves. Again, just like the throttle actuators, BMW seem to overcomplicate these and the Max ECU needs a simpler version of them. And after a little battle, we managed to get these idle control valves out of the valley of the V10 and on the bench. Now you're gonna have to go with me here as this gets a little bit complicated. On the right, we have the idle control valve from the V10 and on the left, you can see a deal taking apart a throttle actuator from a Volkswagen diesel. Now, for those of you thinking, why are you playing with Volkswagen diesel parts when you're building a V10 petrol? It's because the idle control valve on the V10 is very similar to the throttle actuator on the diesel Volkswagen. So on the left, you can see the diesel Volkswagen, which runs a much simpler wiring format than you can see on the right, which is the V10. So these are both Siemens parts and both use the same internals 
but are wired differently. So in theory, if we swap the backing plates over, we can run a much simpler wiring setup using the Volkswagen backing plate. Again, wiring this direct to the Max ECU and bypassing some of the BMW CAN bus systems. So basically, these motherboards just need to be switched to new gaskets, and then that converts it, like you say, from CAN bus to analog. Exactly for that, yeah. Mint. Now I can't take full credit for this modification and I do just want to give a quick shout out to a fella in America called Jason Wandsworth who's been an absolute hero and helped me massively through this project. That's because not only is he a Max ECU supplier in America but he also has an E60 M5 which runs the V10 and a DCT gearbox on a Max ECU. So he has first hand experience and has passed all that knowledge down to myself and I've been asking him multiple questions and probably been the bane of his life but I just want to say a massive thank you for all that information and of course if any of you guys are based out in America and need anything Max ECU related or any form of mapping or anything like that be sure to hit him up his details are down in the description. So with these simplified idle control valves now back together, we could reinstall these on the V10 and start tackling the next problem. The next problem being a set of Audi R8 coils. With this, we're also gonna be doing a set of new spark plugs and also doing some preventative maintenance by changing the injectors. But first, we started with those Audi R8 coils and we let Stuart do Stuart's thing and get quite technical and show us what needed to be done. One hundred forty two, hundred forty two plus five is one hundred forty seven. So we've got to cut that out to there. So five mil off of there, yeah. Yep. So now with ten of these coil packs to modify, we started a bit of a production line. We first had Stuart stripping the rubbers back. I was then filing them down, and then Stuart was then doing the final shave process and double checking that they fitted in the engine. And credit where credit's due he got this calculation spot on. So we refitted all the coils and then started assessing the injectors. We started by removing the old injectors, which were actually in perfect working condition, but just for my own peace of mind, I wanted to change these as they are a common failure point for the V10. Now, unfortunately, these injectors are incredibly expensive, but fortunately for me, going standalone ECU, meant that I'd be able to play with my own fuel tables and could pretty much spec the injectors as I wished. So we went for the same CC size, but these injectors are actually out of a Ferrari 599. It's actually quite a common upgrade, but you do need to adjust the fuel tables if you do this on your V10. Now, one thing you may have noticed a deal do earlier, or you may notice right now, is that we're missing the Ionic module that controls the old style coils. Now, this is because the new coils no longer require this, and we're gonna add an addition of some knock sensors at a later date. Now, what we have here is the DCT loom, which is actually from the E92 originally. Now, Macs do sell a separate loom if you're putting this DCT box in a car that obviously wasn't DCT, but fortunately for us, this car was a DCT. Now, there's a few things on this loom that we're not actually gonna use, like these Lambda sensors. So we're gonna be getting rid of these. And to make this loom nice and pretty and much simpler, we're gonna remove the plug this end and also these plugs here. So now we have our modified DCT loom. We simply need to plug it in so that it's in the engine bay, ready for us to wire it up, as we're gonna be putting this engine and gearbox back in this car and you cannot get to this plug. Well, you can, but it's, believe me, a faff. It's a faff out the car, let alone in the car. As you can see. So that clips in there. Uh, previously clipped would be quite nice. And that's going to clip in this just here, like that. And then that will run up to the existing chassis side loom inside the car. So for temporary measures, we're just going to pop that in the V because we'll have access to that in the car. Now there's two pipes here that I unfortunately broke 
whilst removing this engine and messing around. So we've got two new ones of those and we're going to fit those now. And we bought these from BMW as always, everything genuine, brand new. And they simply clip on here and we'll replace them. So let's get on with that. Nice snug fit. And then that down and through here. And they will clip nicely into the plenum and replace those. I probably could have got away with it, but I just thought for the sake of replacing them, I'd replace them. So the next task then is going to be getting this V10 and DCT combination back in the car, this time hopefully for the final time. So I'm going to take a bit of time doing this, making sure everything is perfectly tight and everything is torqued to spec. So for this we're going to put you guys on a time lapse and hopefully you guys can see the final install of this V10 DCT. And then once it's all in, we can obviously then get on to wiring it up. So, without further ado, let's get putting a V10 in the E92. <laughs> So a massive thank you for watching and of course please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you on next week's episode where we're going to take that deep dive into this E92 and finally wire this car up once and for all. So I look forward to seeing you on the next one. <laughs>